Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Anna McDougall and today I'm going to be talking about arrow functions. Now if you haven't already seen my JavaScript in less than three series, I do do a very quick and dirty explanation about what arrow functions are. So if you're not interested in a longer form video, please do feel free to click there, I'll pop it up there somewhere and uh, you can go through to that for just a quicker explanation. But I had a conversation with a few people after the last video and they were kind of saying, look, I, I get the formatting of an arrow function. I just don't get why we would use them. Um, and, and the truth is you don't really have to use them. If you really hate arrow functions, you can just use standard function declarations. You can just use standard anonymous function calls. There is nothing really forcing you to use arrow functions, but what you will find is that the further you go into JavaScript, the less sense it makes to stick to that old way of using functions. And especially when we start talking about things such as array methods, where you can do stuff very easily and quickly by just using uh, an arrow function, rather than having to use the function keyword and do lots of other things like that. So. Firstly, let's have a look at declaring a function with an arrow function instead. Now, personally, I don't do this. So even though I just talked about how great arrow functions are, I'm actually a fan of the old, old school style where you write function, you put the name of the function, um, my new func, yeah, and then you just pop in some brackets, then you console log, wow, it's my function. Or whatever and that's that's my function right now I like this form I like function because it's very clear what we're working with I like naming it this way I like seeing the parameters this way um, because if we've got parameters let's say then it's very clear to me exactly how I'm going to be calling the function later it looks very similar um, I like having the curly brackets because it's very clear that that is the body and that the scope exists there yes that is very clear to me I like everything about this. I will say some people don't. Some people prefer to define everything the same way that declare everything the same way they declare variables. So just as they would declare or constants for that matter. So just as they would say, let first name equal Suzanne, right? They also or you know const date of birth equals the first of the first 1901 or 2901 apparently. Um, they also like doing functions that way. Const um, find year equals brackets arrow function body or not even, you know, maybe they do this. Funk year, um, you know, 2901 <laughs> for lack of a better term. And then you return 20, 20 minus 29, I, I don't know. And this is just like, this is nothing, right? Um, oh, I see what I've done here. This is not a parameter. Yeah, so 20, 20 minus, yeah, there we go. Um, so in that way, I know a lot of people prefer doing it this way. So if we wanted to redeclare this function in the same way, right, so let me go back a step. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself, right? The reason people like doing it this way is because it's consistent, right? Let first name equal blah, let date of birth equal wah. You know, uh, you could have const year equals, then you could use a number, right? You could have const array equals blah, 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 blah. You can just do it all the same way and then you just put functions in exactly the same category. Const find year equals, and then it shows here what the function is using an arrow function. I get it. I don't like it. <laughs> Personally, I, I like having the function be separate. I feel like functions are special. They, ha they hold a special place in JavaScript and they hold a special place in my heart. Uh, so I like using the function keyword. Um, the other great thing about the function keyword is that it hoists. Now I also have a video about hoisting or function hoisting, I should say, uh, which gives you an idea of what this is. But simply put, it means that when you use this function keyword, JavaScript understands that as being special and it shifts the whole thing up to the very top of the code. Regardless of where it actually is in the code when you type it, it's moved to the top. And that means you can use it anywhere in your code at any time, which is, is lovely and it just means that, you know, there are fewer errors. Um, but realistically speaking, it's not that big, a, big of a pain 
to define a function before you call a function, right? Unless you're very specific about how you like setting things up. Uh, so in that way, you know, the, the arrow function can work. So just so we're super clear on how this would work, um, with the same function, with the same parameters, uh, we would say const my new func equals parameter one arrow, very important, console.log, wow, it's my function. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we don't even need the brackets here because with um, arrow functions, uh, as I mentioned in my last video, if you write a one line return immediately after the arrow, it is understood as a return without the return keyword, right? So uh, in this case, it will return that. Uh, so this could console log, wow, it's my function. We could, um, I don't know, let sum equal 20 plus 45 and then return sum like this when it's all in the curly brackets. But if we just wanted to return something, or we just wanted to execute something, um, then I think we can put it straight after the arrow. But as I said, I don't really declare functions this way, so I'm not I'm not too concerned about this. And most of the time with arrow functions, they are mostly useful, I have to say, in situations where you are doing simple returns, in my opinion. Um, so let's have a look at two common use cases for arrow functions, um, because I want to show you why they are useful and how nice they look. Okay. So event listeners are one of the first instances where you're going to see arrow functions as a junior or as someone learning at home, right? You will see arrow functions everywhere when it comes to event listeners and DOM manipulation. And maybe at the beginning, you know, you were hearing about declaring functions and you were seeing all this stuff and you're like, okay, yeah, whatever. Arrow functions don't need them, optional, cool. And then suddenly you go into the world of DOM manipulation and you're doing uh, event handlers, click events, on change events, and there are arrow functions everywhere. So because this is one of the first things you're going to come across, I'm going to talk to you about why. <sighs> All right. So let's say that when we have a form and we have an input field and then there's a button. And when someone clicks the button, we want to take the input and do something with it. This is very, very typical. You will do this kind of code a million times. So let's have a look at how we do it in JavaScript, in vanilla JavaScript, and then we'll go from there. All right, so firstly, we want to locate our button. Okay, so we will say const um, submit button, let's say, equals document dot get element by ID submit button. Maybe like this, I don't know. However you like to do it. All right, and then we're going to add a click event onto it. Add event listener, click, right? And then we want to run a function that we are going to call handle click. So before we do the rest of this, let's define a function called handle click. Function handle click. And the handle click takes the value as a parameter from the field and it's uh, what does it do? It, let's just say for now, I, I know that I always do console logs, but it's just a lot easier. Whatever. Console logs. Um, thank you for entering value. Right. So now you've got this. Thank you for entering value. Someone enters a value into a text field. They click submit. Then our console says, thank you for entering. And then whatever they entered. Seems pretty straightforward. Okay. So. As a beginner, this is what you would do, right? You'd say click and then someone says, oh, and now you put a callback function in here and you go, great, handle click uh, value. <laughs> or, you know, you do something like this, you do like let uh, new value with a capital equal document dot get element by ID input field dot value. And then you'd say handle click new value. Now, if you're a new coder, I can like, I can almost guarantee that you have either done this before, or if you haven't learned this yet, you will do this. And I'm going to tell you why it doesn't work 
and I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't feel like an idiot when you do it, because it is a very common mistake. Right. A callback function cannot take an argument directly. The reason why is because this calls the function as the program runs through. So your JavaScript interpreter, whatever, wherever it happens to be, is going through line by line, right? Reading your code, interpreting your code, implementing your code. It comes across this and it sees the little brackets there on this callback function. It says, oh, great, you want to run this function. And it will try to run that function immediately. So when you load the page, it will console log, thank you for entering, and it will show nothing because there is no value in our input field. That's a problem, right? That's not what we want. We only want it to do this thing when the button is clicked. So what we have to do here, if we want to use some sort of value in this way, is we have to pass what's called an anonymous function, right? So how we do it without an arrow function is to do this. We go function, empty brackets, curly, oops, curly brackets. There we go. Just get rid of that one, pop the bracket on the end there. All right, handle, click new value. And of course, just to make things a bit clearer, it's also best to pull that value after they click it, right? Because otherwise you're gonna get the value of when the page first loaded, not when they actually click the button, which is what we want. So we have this in here, we fetch the new value from the input field, we handle the click and um, pro tip as well, we're going to do this thing called, um, Remembering correctly, not else, e dot prevent default. I think this is correct. <laughs> and we'll pop an E in here as well. Um, so you'll learn more about this when you learn about click events. I'm, this is not a video about click events. So for now, just trust me that this is a thing. Um, but this is called what's called anonymous function. It means we don't give it a name. We can't reuse it anywhere else. There, there's nothing else going on here. Okay, so now we have this anonymous function and it takes this parameter slash it becomes an argument which is the event and then it does all of these things one two three great let me scroll down here okay because i have this bad habit of not scrolling down and then ruining all my videos uh okay and now we have that situation here looks fine um but what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into an arrow function because it looks nicer it's really the only reason why remove that add an arrow, boom, we've got an anonymous arrow function. Now, why would we do this? Why do I prefer this way? I already said to you guys that when I declare functions, I prefer the function keyword. So why would I prefer arrow functions here? The simple reason is this. For me, that function keyword is when we're defining or declaring a function. That's where it feels like it belongs to me. When we're passing an anonymous function or we're just using a function once, Arrow functions feel more natural because my eye doesn't see this function keyword. The function keyword isn't like flashing out at me. Um, and for me, that just works. It might not work for you. Maybe you do prefer just doing things this way. That's fine. But be prepared to be pulled up on it in future when you're using it with colleagues because almost everyone uses this form for uh, anonymous functions and especially during click events and other event listeners. Now, that is the basic, I, I really could talk so much about this, but that is really the basic idea of using an, uh, an arrow function for event listeners, right? We can do it this way. It avoids us having this awkward thing where we accidentally call the function when the page loads and it's a real pain. Um, but that is it when it comes to adding arrow functions to event listeners. Let's look at one more example. I'm going to try to keep this next one a bit quicker because I know that I'm, I'm going quite long here. All right, so let's have a look at use case two, which is array methods. Now, array method filter, I'm gonna be making a short video on this really soon, but I'm just going to give you a quick idea that the filter method basically sorts through an array or goes through an array and it tries to find any value in that array that matches a certain criteria. I'll show you what I mean. So we have, um, let's fruit array. Loving the fruits these days. Apple, banana, kiwi, lime, tomato. Yes, it's a fruit. Um, 
So we've got these fruits here. And let's say we want to filter it to fruits that are five letters or longer. Right, what we can do is we can say, um, let long fruit array equal fruit array dot filter. And this is where the arrow function thrives because what we can do here is very simple. We say fruit arrow and then we say fruit dot length is greater than five. Okay, what does this do? What this does is it says in this fruit array, I want you to filter each item. I want you to call each item fruit, right? So every time it goes through, the first time fruit is apple, right? Fruit is a parameter in case it's not clear. So the first time through fruit is apple, second time through fruit is banana, then fruit is kiwi, then fruit is lime, then fruit is tomato, right? And then it says only return me fruits with a length that is greater than five, right? So it checks the apple and it says fruit. What is fruit dot length? Five. It doesn't return it. Fruit array, filter, fruit, banana, length, six, return it. Kiwi, four, don't. Lime, four, don't. Tomato, six, return it. And then we get our filtered array that includes banana and tomato. For me personally, it was when I started finding array methods and really getting into array methods. Whew, man, I'm a nerd. When I was really getting into array methods, that's when I discovered array functions and kind of started appreciating them. Before that, I found them a little bit odd and probably I was only using them because I was copying them from other people. Um, but array methods are where they start to become really useful. And then further on down the line, when you start learning promises and async and await uh, and things like this, um, you will start finding array functions uh, very useful yet again, uh, especially with things like fetch and the fetch API. Um, so just trust me that it is good to know. Um, learning about the implicit return that I mentioned before, this thing here, um, is really important. Yeah, learning that if you put it on one line, it implicitly returns here. So this one here implicitly returns all items that match the criteria. Yeah, and that is very useful. It saves us from these if statements, it saves us from extra work, both typing and interpreting code that we see. So this has become a very long video, but I hope that you have found it helpful and that you understand arrow methods, arrow methods, arrow functions a little bit better. Apparently my brain is totally fried. So uh, I will bid you farewell. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share, follow me, Twitter, whatever. You know the deal. I'll see you guys later. Bye.